In this lecture, we demonstrate the steady state sinusoidal analysis of a simple circuit that contains a sinusoidal current source, a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor. And because the Texas Instruments TI-89 calculator is so popular with electrical and computer engineering students, we also demonstrate how to use this device to perform the necessary computations to analyze the circuit. Well, for this circuit, Current is provided by a sinusoidal steady state current source that operates at a frequency of 300 radians per second with an amplitude of 5 amps and a phase of 20 degrees. The current is split between two parallel paths. One path contains a 5 millifarad capacitor and the other path contains a 20 millihenry inductor and a 6 ohm resistor. The objective for our analysis is to determine the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor and the first step in our analysis is to identify the frequency for the sinusoidal source. This frequency is 300 radians per second. And we can use this frequency to associate an impedance with each of the passive elements in the circuit. But before doing that, we'll first associate a phasor current with this current source. The phasor current has an amplitude of 5 and a phase of 20 degrees, so we'll write that as a phasor whose amplitude is 5 and whose phase is 20 degrees. Next, we'll determine the impedance for the capacitor. Now the relationship that determines the sinusoidal steady state impedance for a capacitor is 1 over j times the frequency omega times the capacitance c, where j is the square root of negative 1. And because 1 over j is equal to negative j, we can then determine the impedance as negative j over 300 times 0 0.005 or negative j times 2 divided by 3. Next, let's determine the impedance for the 20 millihenry inductor. Now the physical relationship between the inductor's inductance and its steady state sinusoidal impedance is j times the frequency omega times the inductance L. In that case it's J times 300 times 0 0.02 or J times 6. Next we'll determine the impedance for the resistor and that's simply the resistance regardless of the sinusoidal frequency. Now that we've identified the phasor current for the source and the complex impedance for the capacitor, the inductor, and the resistor we can redraw this circuit with its steady state phasor equivalent. So now we see a phasor current, three complex impedances, and a phasor voltage that we'd like to determine. Now we can analyze this circuit with any method we would use to analyze a resistive circuit with DC sources. The only difference is that the currents, the voltages, the impedances are in general complex valued. So to analyze this circuit, I'll first determine the current that is flowing through the path that contains the inductor and the resistor. I'll call that I2. Then I can use the current division principle to determine the portion of the source's current that flows through this inductor and resistor, which I've denoted with their impedances of Z2 and Z3. Now by the current division principle, this current is the source current multiplied by the ratio of the other path's impedance, which is Z1, divided by the total impedance for the two paths, which is Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. Now once we know this current, we can solve for the voltage V as the current I2 times the impedance Z3. And this final equation gives us all of the equations we'll need to solve for the desired voltage, V. Now, at this point, to carry out these calculations, we could use any computational tool, such as a calculator or a programming language like MATLAB, and solve for this desired voltage. But because the Texas Instruments TI-89 calculator is such a popular tool for students who study circuits, I'd like to conclude by demonstrating how we can use this calculator to perform the necessary computations. 
And to do so, I'll use the following alphabetic memory variables to store intermediate results as we work through our calculations. So for the current IS, I'll store that in the TI-89's numeric variable A. The capacitor impedance that I've called Z1, I'll store in the variable B. The inductor impedance, which we've called Z2, I'll store in the variable C. And the resistor impedance that I called Z3, I'll store in the variable D. And then when I compute the phasor current I2, I'll store that in the variable X. And then the desired voltage, when I finally compute that, I'll store it in Y. So what I'd like to do now is show you how I'll use this calculator. We'll take a look at the screen as I go through the necessary steps to store this value in A, this complex value in B, this complex value in C, this complex value in D, and then we'll carry out this computation by taking A, which is IS, times B, which is Z1, and I'll divide that by B plus C plus D. I'll store that result in X. When I have that completed, then I'll take the current I2, which is stored in X, multiply it by the impedance Z3, which has been stored in D. I'll put that in Y, and that'll be my final result. And I'll take a look at the amplitude and phase, and that will tell me the amplitude and phase for the 300 radian per second sinusoidal voltage that appears across the output resistor. Well, what I'm showing you here is a uh, screen capture for the TI-89. And when I enter into the calculator, the first thing I'll do is go into the Home menu. And there, I'm going to check first to see if I have the mode set where I'd like to have them. And the things I'm most concerned about for this work that I'm going to do is I would like for the angle units to be degrees. And so you can see that we have a choice here. We can set them in radians, degrees, or gradient, but I'm going to put them in degrees. For most circuit problems, we'll be working with degrees. And then the other thing that's important to me is the complex form. In the end, the complex format, in the end, what I'd like to do is determine the amplitude and phase of the resulting voltage. So the last computation that I'll carry out, I want to get those. So what I'll do is I have the option here to set those to real rectangular or polar, and I'm going to go with polar. So those are the two most important things to me now in terms of setting up the modes. All right, so the next thing I'll do is I'm going to start entering values into the calculator. So the first thing I'll do is store 5 with an angle of 20 degrees. So if we look at this part of the calculator, there's a key that gives us angles. So the way I'll enter this is I'll use a parentheses. I'll put in 5. I'll indicate now the angle. And I've set things up for degrees, so I can put in 20. And then I'm going to tell the calculator I'd like to store that in the numeric in the alphabetic variable A. So 5 with an angle of 20 is going to be stored in A. Next I'm going to store the impedance Z1 in the variable B and that's going to be negative J but for this calculator they'll use the physics notation I and that you can find that at this point the second key, I, is here above catalog. And we'll need to multiply that times 2 and divide it by 3. And I'll store that in B. So now I've got that number stored. Next, I'll store impedance Z2 in C. So that's going to be I times 6. And I'm going to store that in C.
So I have that stored. The final impedance I'll store is simply the number 6 for the resistor and I'll store that one in D. So now I have the current, source current, and the three impedances stored in the variables A, B, C, and D. So now I'm going to compute the current I2, and that is IS, which is stored in A, times Z1, which is stored in B, divided by Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3, which are stored in B, C, and D. So this will be A times B, which is Z1, divided by B plus C plus D, Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. And I'll store that. I'm going to store that in the variable X. Now finally, I'm going to compute the output voltage, V, and that'll be I2, which I just stored in X, times Z3, which has been stored in D. So that's going to be X times the variable D, and I'm going to store that in Y. And there's my answer. Now what you'll notice is the answer has a very precise form, 6 times the square root of 29 times the square root of 5 divided by 29 for the amplitude and the phase is negative inverse tangent of 8 times, well we've got some terms over here. What we'd like to see are these terms reduced to approximations and the way to do that is to use this yellow diamond key and then hit enter and you'll notice that there's a little squiggly equal sign. So we're going to take that exact same expression, which is still held at this location, press that diamond, and then hit enter. And what we now get is an amplitude and phase for our result. And this tells me that the output voltage's amplitude is 2.49136, and its phase is negative 111.634 degrees. So perhaps I might write this voltage as 2.5, times the cosine of 300T minus 111.6 degrees, perhaps, if I wanted one, one digit past the decimal on the phase and perhaps one digit past the decimal on the amplitude. So that's how we use the TI-89 for a rather simple circuit, but we can do all of the complex mathematics that's required to compute a desired voltage. The intermediate step was to determine this current. We determined that and then use that to determine this voltage. So it's a powerful tool and when we get to know how to use it we should be able to tackle problems that have complex numbers because of sinusoidal steady state analysis and do those in much the same way that we would approach a problem with resistors, simply resistors and DC sources.